So these are like, uh, 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 that sounds awful. There Don't was... feel bad for us. Fam, it's Rachel and Rhea and we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. Imagine being told that celiac disease only affects children. Imagine being told that someday eh, when you're older you'll grow out of it. Imagine being told just take one bite you'll be okay. Imagine being told that and there's gluten in this but it won't hurt you. Imagine being told everything the doctor has told you is in your head. Imagine being told that there's hocus pocus cures for this. Imagine being told it's just an allergy. Imagine someone lying to you in all these ways. Because for people who have celiac disease, this is our reality. And with that, we'll, we'll take a look. look. At celiac disease myth. Well, we kind of named a few. So you're told, okay, you'll grow out of it. Only kids get it. Oh, that's not true. That is absolutely not true. Because this DNA, you know, we said earlier, instead of your celia looking like this, it looks like this. And I don't know how to cure that. You're born this way. Yeah, I mean, what are we going to do? Like, change our genes? I don't know how to do that. Do you? How am I going to... Exactly. So celiac disease is actually really fascinating because it is in your DNA in that it is extremely different from allergies. Mm -hmm. So allergies can come and go. You can develop them at any point in your life. And like uh, after I had Emma, I just randomly became allergic to strawberries. And from discussing this with other people who have had children, it's not abnormal to develop allergies after giving birth. No. But... Celiac disease, you don't randomly develop it no. when you're 30. No, you've always had it. You just don't know. You're going to be told lots of things like, oh, well, you should have tried eating gluten earlier. Really? The fact that my cilia looks like this versus like this means that I'm going to eat it gluten earlier. That means it's going to make a difference because it's not. Yeah, and another huge myth is that celiac disease only affects your GI system. No. That's not true at all. Well, celiac disease could be why we both have endometriosis, or mm -hmm. it could be the other way around. Mm -hmm. We don't know. It does tend to correlate with um, reproductive issues. It can cause severe rashes. Yep. As can a wheat allergy. However, celiac disease is not a wheat allergy. No. It's completely different. No, celiac basically affects your whole body, and an allergy basically only affects parts of it that either touched it or ate it. Like, Emma gets this, if she eats gluten, she gets this weird, like, rashy film on her skin. Yeah. Where we don't get that. No, because it affects everybody differently. Mm -hmm. That's another myth, too, as well, if you had celiac disease. No! No, that, that's not how any of this works. You're not all going to have the exact same symptoms. No, just like our endo symptoms are all are both very different. Just like it affects your um, how you retain nutrients and stuff like that. So having celiac disease can make you very thin. It can cause you to be overweight too. Mm -hmm. It can mm -hmm. just affect your body's ability to digest food. Yeah. And like one of my symptoms was that my nails just don't grow. My real nails. I can't gain a single ounce of weight. Mm. Also, it can cause you to be shorter, too. Yes, and I'm only 5'1". <laughs> I'm 5'4". I'm very short, and look at Emma. I mean, her father's family, it tends to be taller than my, than ours. However, she is quite a bit taller than me. Yeah. The thing is, too, is people are going to try to sell you these hocus-pocus cures. They're going to be like, well, if you take a bleach bath... Whoops, did I say that out loud? <gasps> Oh, no. Oh, well. Come for me. 
There is no cure for celiac disease. There is only a treatment, and that is going gluten-free. And a lot of people with celiac disease also need to go dairy-free. Yes, I mean, the thing is, too, is that a lot of people will say, well, it says what it is. Well, no, because it hides in other forms. Like if it says this product contains wheat, mm. it contains gluten. And some people are way more sensitive than others. For instance, we can eat food that is produced in a facility where they also process wheat. Um, yes. As long as they're not like mixing it in together and like grabbing, like taking their gloves and grabbing a, you know, thing of regular pasta and then not changing the gloves and grabbing the gluten-free. Yeah. That would be terrible. But as long as they take precautions, like we go out to eat at restaurants and yeah. we're totally fine just, you know, check out our Culver's video where, I mean, they have regular buns there. Yeah. And fryers, we can eat fries that have a little bit of cross-contamination, like McDonald's, if they, they cook so much food in there that has gluten that it makes us sick. But in other fryers where they only occasionally dump something in there, then it's okay. Because I think it's just so hot that it destroys the gluten in the fryer. Well, I mean, that's why we can have whiskey, certain whiskeys. Mm -hmm. Some people who are celiacs can't drink whiskey. Yeah. They can't. Yeah. It's just, it's a fascinating, fascinating disease. And there are so many myths around it. And another myth is that it won't kill you. But it could. Enough of that built up in your system over time. And it can cause some serious, serious problems like um, thyroid disease. Anemia, which we both have. That's why we both uh, wear so much makeup because we would look kind of blue otherwise. Especially when we get our periods, we get so pale, like translucent, we turn blue. And like she said, that's why we wear so much makeup because if we weren't wearing makeup, you wouldn't be able to see us on camera. We would look very sickly. And in a way, the anemia makes us look almost more sick than we are because it's it, it just makes you look kind of like sunken in and kind of like a skeleton. But, I mean, it... I can go around in my day and do a whole bunch of stuff while looking very blue. <laughs> Here's another thing too is celiac disease and gastroparesis, which we will be covering in August, are not the same thing. Gastroparesis is basically where your vagus nerve doesn't work properly and your stomach start and your GI tract starts to die. That's a different I mean, could this be a symptom of further things? Yes, but they're not necessarily the exact it's not one and the same. Another myth is that you can wear makeup and lotion that has gluten in it. No. No, you cannot. We really can't. Now, if you have a wheat sensitivity or allergic to wheat, then you may be able to wear makeup that has gluten in it. May. We don't know, we don't know for sure because we but don't know. We cannot. No. And we couldn't figure out for the longest time why some makeup was making us break out and stuff like that. Watch and this boxy charm up here. Remember what we didn't know? Yeah, and now we figured it out, and it's great. We can wear so much makeup now. They used to put uh, gluten in all kinds of makeup. Now they really don't anymore. No, not really. Another thing, too, is when you get that celiac diagnosis, they often recommend that you throw away all of your pots and pans and all of your plates and your dishes and start all over again with gluten-free only dishes. Now... We did not do that. We couldn't afford it. Also, it takes, it could take a year or more for the gluten to completely get out of your system. And by that time, all of your dishes are super clean and there's no more gluten on your dishes. It's not like gluten seeps into the dishes and stays there. No. The other thing is, too, is that cross-contamination. I mean, you guys, when you're serving someone who's gluten-free, my piece of advice would be, don't just set it with the other dishes. I see this all the time. Set it on a different table by itself so it doesn't get contaminated. Yeah. Uh, we avoid buffets, and, you know, with the COVID going around, we are well more aware of how germs spread, and buffets are just disgusting. Yeah. Just stay away from them. People sneeze on them. They intermix the handles and stuff like that. They may stick their fingers in there. And you don't know if they've washed their hands when they went to the bathroom or did whatever. <laughs> Ew. 
Now, another really important thing, we touched on this last week as well, um, that people can't spread their gluten to you. That no. is actually not true. Like mm -hmm. we said last week, our chiropractor is gluten-free as well. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, yes, I'll give you a hug. Yes, I gladly do that, but I can't promise you that I won't get itchy during the hug. Yeah, and I worked in a bar for many, many years and had to serve beer and change kegs and stuff like that. And I would often touch beer, which has gluten in it, or cut pizzas and stuff like that that also have gluten in them. And it, I, I did get rashes every once in a while, random rashes. And it made me feel sluggish and tired. But I washed my hands a lot, and I wore gloves a lot, yeah. too, so I prevented it from seeping into my skin. Which, again, is why we've asked in the videos, please don't kiss us. Yeah. I know that that's like a hot button issue right now. It's not that we don't like you. It's not even that we don't want you to kiss us. It's that we prefer to stay alive and not be sick for like a month. <laughs> it, it's nothing against you. I, I, we're, we're even sorry this is, and... You know, you also, if, if we can eat gluten-free, anybody can eat can eat what we can eat. Anybody can. It doesn't matter if you're gluten-free or not. It doesn't matter. If you want to be gluten-free because whatever, go ahead, go do it. I don't care. Yeah, that's another myth that going gluten-free will could possibly harm you. No, it's not going to. No. You can eat other grains besides wheat and be perfectly fine, like rice, almond flour. Tapioca flour. Yeah, I mean, whatever. there are so many options out there, and it's not going to hurt you to go gluten-free if you don't need to. No. I mean, a lot of people say that going gluten-free could help you lose weight. I think that the jury's still out on that. I don't know if that's necessarily true. However, if you just want to do that, then go ahead because eating gluten-free and dairy-free is the part of an anti-inflammatory diet, which can and may, might, no guarantees on this, I'm not a doctor either, may help you prevent cancer. Another myth about celiac disease, too, is that um, people believe that they can just, you know, do whatever they want and there are no consequences. Well, that's not the case. Just eat a little bit of this. We talked about this last week in mm. last week's video. That um, we can just eat a little bit, like, oh, taste this, you know, cupcake. We talked about this last week. And, you know, you won't notice because it's just a bite. Yeah, which someone gave Emma a um, regular cupcake once, and she immediately came home and was puking. And I thought, oh, you know, just one will be okay. She wanted it so bad. They didn't have any gluten-free ones. And she wants to be part of the group. No, it wasn't worth it. But the huge regret. Yeah, and I mean... She um, grabbed it before I could even stop her. And, you know, people will say, well, you know, if you would just eat better, you'd be okay. Well, okay, that's true, but I can't eat all of the things that you're telling me to eat. No. We'd love to, trust me. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it basically, I mean, would you guys like to get the flu every time you try to digest something? And then you get really tired and sickly for like a month. And yeah, that might not kill you, but it's an incredibly low standard of living and it sucks. And you know, figuring this out was like somebody like unlocked a door that I didn't even know was locked. Man, I really wish that we had eaten gluten-free when we were much younger. Mm-hmm. It, it, also, people who are gluten-free are not weird. Like, there's no... There's no basis to that. I hear this all the time. Well, the people who eat gluten-free are uh, weird and strange. Well, no. I would just die if I had to do that. I, I keep saying that because that one guy that said that just ricochets in my head. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You would be totally fine. And as you can see, we like to eat a lot of wonderful food and we do not starve. No. We're totally fine. And you gotta also remember, too, that what words, like if you guys were like, well... Um, I didn't get one for you because I didn't know what you can and cannot eat. Well, you could have asked. Or at least let me know ahead of time so I can bring my own. The other thing is, too, is that, like, in, like, a lot of places now, I think, are going to be starting to serve more gluten-free. And I think that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. It's a good start. I mean, there are restaurants that have gluten-free kitchens. Yeah, but, like I was saying, is we've been looking for a meal service and... HelloFresh, for instance, doesn't have gluten-free options. They don't even acknowledge it. No. They're dairy-free. They, they just don't even think about it. How can such a big company not accommodate people with special dietary needs and wants? Because some, 
If you want to eat a certain way, that is perfectly legitimate. If you want to eat paleo, vegetarian, gluten free, vegan, vegan, I mean that's that's up to you. That's Keto, whatever. That's your decision. Not and mine. why wouldn't you cater that? And I really truly believe that restaurants and businesses that are in the um, business of serving food, if they don't do that, they're going to go out of business eventually. Well, yeah. I mean, and you guys understand that there are different severities of this and there's a lot of stuff that goes into these diagnoses you know we were known I mean we're not going to say exactly but you know like we we know we have this we know we feel better we know we have more energy yeah so much more energy and yeah I mean when when we first went gluten-free I know that I personally just lost a lot of bloating weight Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I felt like I could just move better. It was just nicer. It's hard to eat this way, yes, but you do things because you have to, not because you necessarily want to. Yeah. And these diets are, are, are nothing to be afraid of. They're just like, oh, well, that's interesting. Like, And when you think about being scared of them, just look at how Amy Lee Fisher had to live and many other people like her who cannot eat solid food so you should always be thankful about where you're at and what you can do and what your abilities are because um there are so many people who would love to be in your position i know that this is a lot of information to throw at you at one time mm -hmm. but at the same time if i don't if we don't teach you you're never going to learn mm -hmm. you're going to continue these really odd stereotypes You've met, and again, we've said this about autism, we've said this about endometriosis. You've met one person who's a celiac. You've met one person who's a celiac. Not yep. everybody. Celiacs come in all shapes and sizes. It's not like you can just look at someone and say, hmm, that person looks like a celiac. Yeah. Unlike autism, where sometimes it can be a little more apparent. Yes. Like, we just knew something was up with Emma because of how her eyes looked. Mm -hmm. And still do. And it's like... So many of these things are, I don't know if it's, you know, I don't even know how the genetics of this work. Like, I don't know. But, I mean, you know, your limp little Celia. And, you know, eating, if I eat gluten, if I eat, like, we ate, we cheated a couple of years ago at the state fair. And we went and ate a bunch of gluten. And the three of us were sick as dogs for, like, the next month. Never again. Well, we went into Five Guys the other day because Emma really wanted a burger. And... The guy taking our order asked me what celiac disease is, and he wanted me to explain it to him. And I was, I was happy to give him a lecture on it and um, increase his knowledge. I was glad that he asked and that he told me he didn't know and he he wanted to know. I was I was, but I was thankful for it. But then some people who you tell about celiac disease are like, uh, 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 wait. that sounds awful. There Don't feel bad for us. We've said that a million times, and we're not going to stop saying it. Don't be afraid to ask questions. That's another myth, too, if people who have celiac disease don't want to take your questions. We've heard the same questions a million times, and we'll answer them a million times. We don't really care. As you can see from this month's topic on Mondays, we have no problems talking about this, and we love to talk about it, and we would love to inform you and educate you. Because if you don't get educated, you're never going to learn. And yeah. if you don't learn, what's the point of being alive? And we do have some problems. We have people, you know, who talk about, you know, going to the bathroom or people who, you know, talk about gaining weight. That's a privilege, not a right. Mm. So just remember that when we're talking about including minorities and being diverse, we need to include people with disabilities and chronic illnesses. That is absolutely Please stop necessary. leaving us out. Because we still get, that's weird, that's gross, ew. I don't want the people, the high maintenance people around not being high maintenance. I'm just trying to survive. And I'm not going to sit there and taste your gluten full, 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 gluten full food. That's what I'm trying to say. Another thing, too, before we end this that I'm going to say is that my brain fog improved significantly after we went gluten free and dairy free. COVID kind of changed that, but... It, I mean, I saw such a huge difference. Oh, yeah, and so did I. Just remember that inflammation in your body affects every single organ and especially your brain. So if mm -hmm. you've got inflammation around your brain, I mean, that's just going to make you super cloudy. Yeah. So if you are looking to improve your brain fog, I would highly suggest going gluten-free and dairy-free. As long as you are 
discussing it with a doctor and a nutritionist. Don't just do it because I said so. No. Make sure that you are informed and um, doing it correctly. <laughs> And you guys know that we're we're only we, disclaimer we are not doctors. No, we are not doctors. Not. We're just two girls with a camera and the ability to research and who have these illnesses. We are not nutritionists. However, I did take a nutrition class in college and I did see a nutritionist while I was pregnant with Emma. So I do know a lot and can back it up. And don't be afraid of the people with allergies. That's a good myth or any kind of chronic yeah. illness. You guys, we're going to end the video here because, you know, we could talk about this forever. But uh, there's no reason to. But, of course, since we are YouTubers, there is, of course, the whole little spiel I now have to give you. First thing I'm going to ask you to do is if you liked this video, make sure that you give it the biggest thumbs up you possibly can. I would never even dream of giving the thumbs down button if I didn't like this video, thought we were crazy or didn't believe in celiac disease or for whatever reason because YouTube is a dirty little trickster and it counts the thumbs up and thumbs down button as exactly the same thing. We've had this problem with other people, so don't click the thumbs down button. Why would you give oxygen to the garbage? Smash that subscribe button down below. Guys, we crossed the 550 mark. I want to continue. I want you guys to get us to 600 by the end of the month. Do you think you guys could do that? Because this is the best job she or I have ever had. Please stay tuned to the channel. There are more announcements. While you are down there, I would also advise you to go to the right. Click that bell. Give it a ring and click all. Because if YouTube is going to play nice with you, maybe it will tell you that we are live or we post videos for the time being. We'll be posting videos every Monday. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And a lot of times we will be doing rallies on Saturdays. So we hope that you are learning so much from this. And if you made it to this part of the video, please make sure that you leave a green heart down below to let us know that you appreciate what we're doing here. And make sure that you're sharing these videos with your friends so that we can help people learn about the uh, celiac disease. And thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Bye. Oh my God.